Hey everybody, this is Clarence from 2items.com with an update to my Puppet Bolt Task Lesson 1 video. This video is going to be Puppet Bolt Task Lesson 1.1. <laughs> and the last one basically showed you about how Bolt Tasks are similar to the scripts and that you can basically create these little chunks of task or code that you can transfer to all your nodes on your network at one time and um, get various jobs or tasks just like these the name suggests done so at any rate I'm gonna make this video very short sweet and I'll do some cut and pasting and I've already made some of the files already in there but we're gonna go over the same thing but the file system is gonna be laid out slightly differently because I upgraded to a different version of puppet uh, bolt and um, that opened up some more doors for me and I changed the way I did the layout so I'm just gonna show you how I did the layout um, now going forward how I have my my tasks and plans laid out but this is where you download it from I had that up on the screen for a while so that's how you install puppet bolt just follow those directions and I created a directory that I'm gonna be working out of called my mod that's gonna be my project and now what I've done now is I created a you create a file called bolt project yaml and inside of that basically my directory name my mod it could be basically anything you know um, uh, that's the name of my project right um, and the module pass, I don't have anything to define. I'll just use the default. But if you had modules that you would like to reference and you had them in different non standard areas, you could put that information there. And this, these are just options that you can supply on the bulk command line con concurrency, whether or not you want to see colorization on the command line, whether or not you want your debug level, um, a notice level, a warning level of messages. And this is where you would define, which I saw a lot. Remember, before I had everything inside the modules directory, right? Um, before and inside of that directory when you do that when you run puppet bolt I'm sorry my pop up when you run bolt task show it shows like everything on the system right and you get confused but when you create your project you can define what you would like to see on um, as a result when you're running that command and by now we're just gonna have one simple um, task so I'm gonna assign that and it makes it so much cleaner um, and when we create a plan it will be here right now it's commented out because we don't have a plan and then I create an inventory file and there's basically inventory is basic simple um, I may do some changes to this later but you create the name group name Linux targets the name of this machine is cool C1 if I had another cool C2 system I could put it there or server 1 server 3 server 4 and then whenever I run um, the task against this group name it will run against all the targets listed here if I had more than one but I don't have more than one machine on this test machine network so here we go then we got config and we do config uh, SSH we want to do SSH we were doing Windows this will change to the transport you would use of Windows if you Google um, bolt you can find out how to communicate with a Windows machine using this and I don't want to check for the host key um, and for now we're going to play around with the student user we're going to do our task with the student user and then we're going to have a custom prompt we're going to prompt on the command line for student users password um, that's what that's that's what this is telling us to do oh did I change something maybe I changed something yeah, save it doesn't matter okay all right so and then we have plans which nothing's in plans and then files is where we would normally put some of the files that we need to upload if we wanted to um, we're not going to be doing anything really the files are going to be where you would upload from the plans so if you had um, if you had plans then you can upload files but from our tasks what I noticed is you cannot upload from this files directory if you have if you want to directly upload files from a task then you need to put this task inside of a subdirectory called modules and then give that module a name and then have all everything broken down and that's the way I had it done in the first version of this video so let's get started anyway, we're gonna have there are two files in it. it's going to be the JSON same thing we have a JSON file here and if we wanted to do files then we would do something like um, uh, it would be files um, and then it would be um, the name of the file something like here you know uh, my mod slash files slash test dot text something like that but with maybe double quotes because sometimes I believe uh, single quotes when you and within this JSON file is a little bit weird and that's basically what you would do um, if you want to if you want to have files and what that would do is that's basically just saying upload that file to all of the targets when you actually run this task 
but like I said, we won't be using it. But what this is saying is this parameter, we only have one parameter on our script, which is called partition. And the optional, it's going to be an optional string because the default will be a forward slash if we don't give this anything else. So, and then we do look at the script. There's always a JSON file and there's always a script. Those two go together. And this is our little test script. And it's just a basic shell script. I'm not going to go into detail exactly what this does, but all you need to know is it's going to run df-h and it's going to um, print out. I'm on, I have this left over, um, but actually I'm going to, I'm going to remove it for now. There are other variables that get used. It's called PT, like I just had in there, PT, like PT underscore underscore um, installed there. That just lets you know where items are being uploaded to. So let me go back. Actually, let's 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 go back and put that back in it. So what we'll do is we will keep this, and this is just going to show us where this script that we're currently in um, is copied up to copied on the server so when you run this when you run this uh, task it's going to automatically upload the shell script and then execute the DF command from the shell script but it's going to upload it into this directory here right and sometimes when you upload files or you may want to dip into this directory and do something make a change or copy a gif up there or copy something or RPM or whatever and this this is how you reference and find the location that's all this is really saying so let's get rid of that. And now let's run the command bolt task uh, show. Let's see what happens. Okay, good. So now it's coming up and showing it. Before it was showing like 13 items, right? But now it's only showing the one because we have it listed in that bolt dash puppet, uh, bolt, bolt dash project file, YAML file. And it's going to show us our module path. And this is how you run it. So basically, if we want to run this, then we would just do puppet oh no we're going to do a show let's dig down into it so it's showing us the module but we want to know more detail about this module so we could do this and it's going to show us more detail about that module this task will run a df executable this is the usage for that model it tells you exactly and it tells you the parameters that are available remember in our file we had the keyword or the group name in our index I mean on our uh, inventory file of Linux and then we have a part partition var variable so we need to give it that and then we give it this equals slash dev so oops Only one second. and if we run this it's going to come back and probably ask us there we go it's going to ask us for the student's password which I think this is the student's password <laughs> and that's that's what it did so it copied the file up to cool C which is really itself it executed this command against our parameter and it print out the location of that files directory PT files directory so um, like I said that really isn't used until you start using the files keyword inside of the JSON file and once you start using the files keyword in here, then that PT, um, that PT underscore underscore uh, variable becomes more important. This guy, this installer becomes more important. Once we get to plans, it'll make more sense. But anyway, you get the idea. So this is how you can see. And if we don't do anything, it should just default to root, right? Because remember, we told it that if, if a user does not give the option partition, on the command line then do slash and that's it it, it sent the slash as the as the as the uh, parameter so that's pretty much it that's all I wanted to show you today is to just basically break down exactly how simple it is now um, it's really simple all you need is the are these um, are these small amount of files you just need the plans directly files directly bolt dash project and the inventory file and you should be good to go so that's pretty much it I just wanted to update this and show you how I've, I've changed everything around the next video will be on plans and then I'm going to take off from there we'll just try to build something really much more intricate and hopefully this was helpful and thanks a lot hopefully you subscribe and give me some ideas because like I said I want more ideas on where to go with this all right have a good one